Well, good afternoon. Uh, it's uh, uh, Sunday afternoon here in uh, uh, Seattle, so I'm having a nice uh, blue moon, Belgian white. Uh, it's an interesting beer. Uh, my wife drinks it with a slice of orange in it, but uh, it's okay by itself. I wanted to take uh, a quick moment to look at uh, a 478A and some uh, associated meters here. Uh, the 478A is a thermistor mouth, and I'm fairly certain I've done a video on this, I need to go check. Um, and they're from, you know, this particular one here is uh, from, uh, I believe, what, 10 megs up to 10 gigahertz. And so, um, you know, it has a set of calibration factors, you can see those, let me just zoom in a bit so you can see this. You know, you can see the calibration factors in here. Um, and so, these uh, items are designed to be plugged into uh, a power meter. And what I was uh, going to show is, and the, if I've shown this before, uh, what you would have seen is, is this guy here, which is my uh, 432B, or, sorry, 432A power meter. And let me make sure I'm sitting right out. And so this power meter uh, has uh, the input for the thermistor mount and uh, you know set of powers you can set and the calibration factor in here and it reads across here. Now these are, are capable of quite accurate uh, uh, readings and uh, in fact uh, the 478A and not this particular one, you need to get uh, a slightly different one uh, that has a better SWR rating is actually used to measure the um, or to set the uh, output power on the 50 megahertz references on the other series of power meters, like the 435A, the 435B, the 47, the 437, 436, 438, uh, and you know any of the other uh, items like the EPM range or so on, or the 8902As that have uh, that uh, power output. And the reason for that is is that the, there are two types of power meters. There's this type here which is what they call a closed loop uh, a power meter. And so effectively uh, what it's doing is it can, uh, as long as this guy here is calibrated and this is calibrated, you can just plug this in and directly read uh, a value. Let me go grab uh, one of the other uh, meters here. Let me move this out of the road. Uh, and this would be the uh, 435B. Uh, with these, they're uh, an open, uh, loop meter. So you, when you plug in your sensor, in fact I can just, just uh, grab a sensor here and I'll show you what these are. Just pull it out. You know, when you plug in your uh, sensor here, you need to actually calibrate it on this power output with uh, uh, the calibration factor, and you can see right up in here, there is a calibration factor reference CF is 100% on this particular meter. So you take this guy and you stick it on here, and then you know you set the calibration uh, factor over here, you set uh, uh, the range there, and you want to basically adjust it so that the meter is reading correctly here at the one. You can see it's like marked cal. And so if you don't have this reference correct, no matter what, how accurate or how well specced or you know, whether you've sent it off to be looked at by Keysight or whatever, you're never going to be accurate if this guy isn't uh, uh, accurate. So that's what uh, people have been using these 432As and the 478As to go and uh, uh, do. So I already had one of these, but what I saw come up... Uh, on eBay while I was uh, looking at something else is this guy here and if you're familiar with the the case style you might be saying wow that looks very similar it looks a lot like uh, a 415e uh, SWR meter it looks a lot like a 419a there's a lot of gear from this era that looks just like this guy here and here you can see it this is a 431c power meter. And this is the power meter prior to uh, the 432. So this was being sold for no pa uh, for parts uh, not working. 
and the reason that it is is you can see the meter is stuck here and so you can't turn it on and you can't move it in so I you know I thought well what the hell I'll buy it you know I, I love these this era of, uh, of meters uh, and so I thought well I'll buy it and uh, take a shot at repairing it so when it came in the first thing I noticed and let's see if we can get in here and get a really good shot of this and I'm not sure we can but you know if we can get in there you might just be able to see you know there's you can see the sticker surface is oh, just trying to just starting to peel up and that's caused the diacinal movement to seize up inside there and that's created the that's jammed the display so this is actually a common problem with HP meters of this vintage is this you know film here what it was was basically a transfer have you ever done your know, model making with the old Revel model kits and you'd get a little plastic transfer that would have the you know the American Air Force symbol or the Luftwaffe or so on you know those things were basically you put them in water and it separated the paper and you laid it down it's a very similar type of approach they use on these uh, meter surfaces and so what ends up happening is that ends up peeling up and in this case it's got it under there so I think what we can do is take this apart get inside here and just carefully use a exacto knife to just take that edge off um, and that might give us a little bit of time to be able to go and use uh, the meter before we would need to go and uh, and do something else and you know I, I don't know what else you do on it maybe you could throw some of the um, you know maybe I could throw some of the uh, uh, conformal coating spray that I have uh, you know clear down this thing throw the conformal coating spray over it and, and that might do it hmm I'll have to ask that question anyway I thought it'd be interesting to get this because it's this classic display it's, it looks identical you know to the 415e so let's take it apart and see if we can get in here and uh, get this working now, as always use a posi drive uh, a screwdriver on these things because they're almost always guaranteed to be uh, posi drive screws uh, a few little packet and you can see here that clearly if we get in there and, and say zoom in a bit you'll you'll see that what happens when you don't use a posi drive screw driver is that you'll cam out um, the screws a bit so let's get back in there we'll take that out and then we'll take this top cover off now I've never looked inside one of these things so I have really no idea what we should be expecting in there Okay, well, actually, I did. I guess I did have an idea. If you go and have a look at mine, I'll link it in uh, in the description. You'll see the uh, uh, description of uh, the four and five E. It's a very similar top plate with the same cinch connector, or very similar cinch connectors in here, um, and that. So let's get in and take a look uh, on the side and see what we see here. So this will be the the guy we'll take off over here. I think we can get in and see you'll see you think you'll be able to see what I mean when I say oh, let's come back a little bit and get my finger in there you can see there's the slight little cross symbol that's the posi drive uh, symbol there so and here this is very simple it's a very clean laid out board you can see the nice right angles and, and so on it's still hand taped or hand laid out um, a bunch of adjustment points I'm guessing for adjusting the the meter I haven't looked at the, uh, the manual yet 
but here you go uh, the next thing to take off I guess will be the bottom these are uh, feet here are very common for the instrument of the decade you know uh, time you open it down pull, pull that little uh, popper out and it comes out of this hole here and then you just slide these across thing doesn't actually come out uh, when you take the things off there. Okay. And there we go. So you can see that most of the space here is taken up by the fact that you know the size has to address the front panel controls so what we can if we look inside here you can see uh, let me grab some, something here there's going to be our meter let me take a look at the, the front okay power calibration range so this guy is going to control the power these things you know, probably came at least they're fitted out for um, an optional battery so you know in the 415e you could get a, a 24 volt battery that would plug in here a little NICAD battery uh, and then come up so I'm wondering you might be able to get that as an option for this guy as well um, you know but then you'll have uh, your range and you'll have uh, the input uh, part where the input connector where the actual uh, 478A uh, plugs in is in there you know we have uh, some tuning to get uh, you, you know uh, uh, to do a coarse tune on the whole uh, meter the process you basically take is you do a coarse tune uh, on the meter or at least uh, on the 432 uh, it's probably very similar you'll do a coarse tune on this to get it roughly in a position and then you'll use you know the vernier up here to zero uh, the meter properly and at that point it's all uh, reading so how these guys work is these guys have a 10 kilohertz signal uh, that comes out here and goes into uh, the thermistor and that uh, 10 kilohertz signal heats up the uh, bias signal heats up the thermistors uh, in the the 438 uh, the 4788 basically what there are is there's you know where this is where you would plug in the RF connection there are two thermistors that sit in series with this connection here and then there are two others that are stuck in here on the substrate as well and uh, the role is basically that these two thermistors here will heat up from the signal come well let me restart when you put the bias temperatures in you'll get um, uh, the, the thermistors all the thermistors will heat up and basically uh, what you'll get is you'll get uh, what's this three things you'll get the temperature from the bias, you get the temperature from uh, the outside, you know, how hot is the area, and then you get the RF signal. I think that's the three uh, things. So the compensation thermistors, as they call it, only get the bias uh, voltage and the, um, the ambient temperature, whereas this gets the bias voltage, the ambient temperature, plus the RF signal. So because you know what those two are and you basically can balance them together, you can then use the electronics in here to add the signals or to combine the signals in a way that gets rid of um, any changes in the bias uh, current and the latent temperature and you're aiming to end up with a 200 ohm uh, mount resistance so these uh, uh, thermistors in here will eventually come down to heat up and be about 200 ohm per uh, resistor set series so with this in place here what I'm going to have to be able to do is I'm going to have to be able to take out that uh, front panel. If we look up here, scroll it in. Um, this uh, part here, we'll have to take the screws out uh, of the side here so we can slide this off so we can get this part out here. And then that will give us access. And if we look in here, you'll see that'll give us access to a screw in here. Uh, and then there'll be another similar screw uh, down in here, I think, hang on, if we can see it, uh, just in there. And once we take those out, that sh and then the corresponding screws, of course, on that side, 
that should enable us to pop out um, this movement here and then I think we can take it well, actually hmm wondering if we might be able to just take the glass out is the bezel uh, I don't know I'll have to have a look at uh, my I, I have one of these out of my 4 and 5e at the moment so I'll take a look but I was just wondering if you know if we look in this back here you know you can see that there are uh, some screws here on the movement and then some screws down here that will be uh, maybe accessible once if we take this card out um, that we could just simply pop the front off without actually needing to uh, take the unit out or part at all. Alright, let me take a quick look at uh, one of my uh, uh, other ones and I'll be uh, right back. Okay, so this is the um, this is the meter from the 4 and 5 e and you can see here if you get in this meter started to crack all around and it's not in real great shape um, you know in terms of being a, a, a movement so at some point I would expect um, that the covering in there to start lifting off and in fact I think if I look in there, I think it has. Maybe somebody's got in there and actually already scraped that down. You might be able to see some bits and pieces laying in there on that. So, anyway, uh, I think we can just get in. And one of the ways to test whether the movements work is to just give it a shake. And if you see the needle move around, you know, you can, you know, have a bit of a reasonable belief that, okay, you know, the basic, uh, uh, movement might be okay because what typically happens to these things as far as I understand I'm not an expert in these but uh, is that you can get little pieces of metal or a little magnetic stuff or dirt basically gets stuck into the the movement and that will constrict the the movement because it's basically just a little coil inside a couple of magnets um, so if you ever bind these if you can shake them and the, the needle moves fairly freely you'll know that you know it's a good chance that it's actually been pretty good uh, and then, you know, clearly if you could go whack some, you know, the appropriate current on it, uh, you could then test it. But I think we can just take these four screws out and take the bezel off. So let's, let's just give that a try. And if we can do this, then what it means is I can probably just take the bezel off by removing one card uh, and then popping the the bezel off rather than you know disassembling everything and then have it hang out and maybe have to unsolder some wires to get uh, to get access to pull it out so let's uh, there we go yes it does so I think if you look at the the front of this here let me carefully put this down you know if you look at the front here you'll see there's a little you know you can see there's a little ledge in there now that ledge uh, that sort of ridge there is used by this bar that runs across the top to secure it so when you put them all together you basically run that bar like a little clip that run that run that bar like a little clip that runs over the top of the uh, the little meter there so yeah oh and actually you can see and we might while we're here let's uh let's take that other let's just zoom right in and see if you can get get the, the movement out there working you know you can see the there's the oh, I'll get my screwdriver right away you can see there's the little bar the little arm and then this is just basically this is the, the uh, zeroing, so there's a manual zero and on the back of the, let's see if I can get that in the shot here on the back here you'll see there's like a little uh, pin and that hooks into the, the screw on the front and that gives you the ability to just manually zero uh, this uh, lever so that it's lined up with uh, the zero point here but inside here you can see here's the the magnet that you're getting in down in there and so gunk gets in there and that sort of seizes up uh, 
or that magnet there. And I don't know if you can see, but I think, you know, people might have gotten in. Let's see if you can see the little cracks in there. You know, well, that might have peeled up and somebody might have gotten in there and just cleaned that down. Anyway, let's put this guy uh, back together and then uh, we'll, uh, we'll put this guy back together and then we'll move back to, uh, uh, to the main put this guy back together and then we'll move back to uh, our main unit here okay so I'm gonna have to take this bar off anyway so that we can slide that item out and then let's take this card out as well so the first thing I'm going to do is take that actual card out so let's just unplug undo those screws I don't remember seeing a calibration sticker on any of the actual, like we saw the cowboy seals that were there um, so that we wouldn't get into the unit, but I don't remember seeing an actual sticker that said when the unit was last calibrated. So, you know, we really have no idea. Um, but now I can get in there, so now I should be able to uh, just start undoing some of these screws on the side here, because we basically want to. Uh, we want to do, no, we want to leave that. What I want to do is I want. I'm actually going to have to. Yeah, I'm going to have to tilt this forward. So let's take. That screw out and loosen this guy here. Okay, and then we'll take the top screw out here. Okay, and then we'll loosen this guy here and then see if we can just. <clears throat> And they certainly got these in. Well, there we go. Okay. And so now we can just, oh, calibration code? No. Just slide that guy off. And you see how it forms like a little clip that just goes across the top there. And so now I should, if we're lucky, just be able to. Everyone. Just take that front panel off. Okay. And there we go. So now, let's just see if we can just... Okay, so I wonder if we can see in a little bit better that there's like just a little, you know, stuff there. So let me see if I knock. shake you see the little needle wander around so let's grab my exacto knife and 
now just see if we can just carefully just shave along okay so I think now I can probably get this back together and then we'll be able to give it a try Okay, so now that we're back, before you go to the trouble of screwing everything back together, you really want to just give the little adjust here a uh, thing. Oh, you might not be able to see it. There you go. You want to give this little screw a little twist and just make sure that you've got the, the right piece mounted. You know, that little pin just connected right into the... Uh, um, right into the... Uh, uh, right part of the, the meter so that uh, you get the zero action because it's a bit of a you know you don't want to put it all back together then and get ready to go use it and then discover that the initial zeroing you have to do can't be done because you've got um, you missed uh, uh, putting that uh, that screw in so normally I would go sort of diagonals on this because um, you know, you want to try and make sure everything's centered. Oh, well, I had to uh, set that aside uh, yesterday and uh, back this morning. Choice is uh, Makona Coffee, uh, direct from Australia. Uh, it's an instant freeze-dried coffee. You can buy it here in the U.S., but it's uh, very expensive. Okay, so now I've got this all screwed in, so let's get this link plate across the top here again and now let's just slide this back in there we go okay so now <coughs> I'm just going to screw that uh, guy back in there oh, oh, these aren't uh, the ones in general the ones that are connecting the uh, <coughs> the framework uh, around here uh, in general the ones that are going to be connecting the framework around here will have a, uh, a little uh, uh, shock washer associated with them so that uh, uh, it will keep it from uh, um, coming on loose so huh, interesting okay I guess they are the ones because uh, they're not uh, they don't actually have the, the shock washer on them if you see if I take uh, uh, this one out here the, the anti-vibration washer you, know, you can see the little washer that's around it. So, I mean, it's an indication that somebody might have already been in there. We saw that it looked like that uh, the display was cleaned up. So I'm guessing maybe somebody was in there and did in fact uh, clean up. Okay, so now we've got it uh, back together. And as you can see, if I move the thing around, you can see the little uh, needle moving. So, Let's go and plug this in, and we'll see what actually happens here. Okay, the approach for uh, using this meter is a little bit different than the approach for using the uh, 432. Uh, so it says that uh, we need to connect the thermistor. So let me you know, connect. Get the cable. I'll connect the thermistor now because you should do this work with the thermistor connected to the RF source. So 
I'll just connect the thermistor directly to my uh, 8657B and then uh, we'll plug this guy in here and we'll screw that down okay now the RF is off so it says turn the mount resistor yep set the range to uh, range to 0.01 okay yep set power line to on okay Oh, yes, and it says an infrared battery operator. So, yeah, remember how I was saying that you could get, uh, if we move that out there, you could see the, the battery entries there. Uh, okay, so set power line to zero. Just zero control for 25 to 50% of uh, the full scale. So. One of those vernier. So, so that's very sensitive. Okay, so, so I switch that to null. Huh, well there you go. We can't get this into the null region. So what we're supposed to do is get Just, just. Uh, oh, okay. So, what it says is we set this, and then we uh, uh, adjust the null for the minimum reading. You know, and then we uh, repeat steps five and six until the null reading. Keep doing this. Okay, well, so that's about as good as I can get it. And I haven't read the calibration thing yet, the calibration part of the manual yet, so. I'm not sure if uh, I can calibrate that in uh, or what's going on. But now that we've got that, it says set the range switch to the power range to be used. And so we're going to be on uh, 0 dB because that's going to be the output of our meter. So now I should be able to use the zero control to zero the, the meter out. And so clearly I can't. Uh, you know, so that's like where the the meter's going. We know the movement moves. Oh, oh, no, the movement? Huh, interesting. Okay, so I could never get it uh, much lower than about 2.1 here. But I did discover that when the unit was sitting up on its uh, back there, uh, it did keep catching around the, the 2 mark. But when I sat it down here, it, uh, it worked. So Rather than go in and take another poke at it, I thought I would just simply see what we could do. Now, I've got it here on zero, and you saw that it said to go zero the, the meter. So, you know, you use the, the zero to get close. And then once you're close, you can use the vernier to just bring it in. So that's uh, at zero and then my calibration factor is 99.9 .9 for 50 megahertz which is what I am and I've got my 8657B set to zero so when I turn this on we should see the meter come up to somewhere around zero here so let's see what happens when we actually do that and uh, that's not bad let's take uh, this at the amplitude increment is one uh, dBm and we'll just step it down in one dBm slots so we're at about 0 0.2 dBm here so we'd want to end up about here let's step that down 
and let's step it down again. All right, so we're roughly seeing the meter actually work. Um, reading the thermistor correctly. So <clears throat> I think there's a pretty good chance that this is going to be, uh, be a working meter. So what uh, we would do normally and how you would use this apart from that zero stuff, uh, this range function here works the same on, on both these meters. So what you would do is if you're interested in, uh, you know, if I was going to say come up to 10 gigahertz, I'd set my output to 10 gigahertz. I'd look at my uh, uh, my thermistor mount here, my 4788, and I'd see that it was at 96%. So what I would do is I would come in here and I would turn this calibration factor around 96%. And now when I was at, when well, you see, I would read the, the right uh, value. Now that calibration factor is set um, at, uh, you know, by a Keysight uh, in a very accurate, uh, or in their car lab, and they have a set of jigs and uh, some test gear that will test uh, these power sensors and let you set the, get these values correct. Um, but at 50 uh, megahertz, uh, I know that I'm uh, at 99.9, .9, so that's close enough to 100, you know, and so we're getting pretty close there, you know, and uh, you could, I wonder if you could probably zero it out a little bit. There's, you know, and then see, let me go upper. Yeah, it's not really linear, but uh, uh, I think the next step from this would be to me to go read the adjustment procedure, and then we'll uh, see about adjusting the, the meter completely. But, first look uh, indications is that it uh, looks like it is completely repairable. Anyway, I hope you find that interesting, and I'll catch you again later.